You've just qualified as a scrum master. You're going to work with a team for the first time. What do you do? What are those first steps? Well, step one, have a little party. Congratulations, you're a scrum master. You've passed maybe a simple test, um, but you've taken that first step. So take a moment, acknowledge that, and be happy for yourself. Well done. Now, you've got to work with the team. Many scrum masters will do what I did at the start of my journey and get stuck in. They'll start doing things, they'll start tinkering, they'll change things, that's not scrum, you should be doing that this way, all of that stuff. Don't, please don't. Just talk to the team, work out what they are doing and why they're doing it. In fact, for the first couple of weeks, I will often recommend, don't go in and make big changes. The old tweak here and there when you can see and you understand why they're doing something is helpful. Big changes are gonna trigger the team to make them think you believe you know how to do their job better than they do. And that is not going to be a solid place to start. You're going to be fighting an uphill battle from day one. So instead, take your time, understand, okay, not only what they're doing, and I've said it a few times now, but why they're doing it. Okay? Maybe they're not doing scrum. Maybe they're kind of doing scrum, but there's some weird bits going on. Why? How has that come about? What is it that they are benefiting from that change? Okay. And the way to do that is twofold. Observation. Sit down and watch them. Okay. Scrum masters get really busy. They get concerned that because they're not doing stuff, they're not offering value. But the value in your role is not in doing. It's in the observation. It's in the challenging conversations that we can pull forwards from those observations. So just calm down a sec, watch what they're doing. Why are they doing it? See if you can gather it and then talk to people. Okay, go and talk to the team. I've noticed you don't do a sprint retrospective. Why is that? We're too busy. Okay, well, now I can start having a conversation about what a sprint retro is, what it's for, and how they may have found a different way of serving the same purpose. This is a mistake that I made quite early on in my career. I was invited in to work with a team and they didn't do a sprint retrospective. And whenever I tell people, you can almost hear the gasp of absolute horror. They don't do retros. Well, how do they get better? And I was lucky. Uh, one of the developers managed to shut me up before I opened my mouth and made a fool of myself and said, we do improve, but we don't do retros. Come back tomorrow, you know, first thing, and join us. So I did. Nine o'clock in the morning, I appeared to work with the team. And about 10 minutes later, they all turned their chairs to face each other. Days of data uh, in-person um, work. And they started having a conversation that was very, very interesting. Because what they did every morning was they spent 20, maybe 30 minutes discussing the day before looking for something that they could do differently to improve every day. They didn't have a retrospective at the end of their sprint. They'd got rid of it. Not because they didn't see the value, but because they found a better way for them. Every day they were willing to set aside up to about 30 minutes to really look at the day that they'd had, how they were going, how they could improve. And from that, they would take a small change and implement it through that day. It could be something as simple as changing how they committed code. They could try out, and I was there when they started playing with pair programming. Okay. They tried it, it was hard. They struggled. The next day they came in and they asked the question, was it worthwhile? And what for me was great was not only was it worthwhile in a sense of did we enjoy it, but what did the data say? So they actually had it set up so they could have a look. Were we better? No, actually we were slower. They produced less stuff through the day, but their sentiment was, well, of course we're slower because we're new to this. We need to give it time. Okay? And every day they had a very quick check-in. Are we getting, we're getting a little bit better. We're getting a little bit better. And in a few weeks, they were back to where they were before 
but they had a sense that their quality was improving and the data led them to know that. So please don't just dive in with both feet. Take your time, understand what the team's doing. Really try and observe, okay? See what they're doing, talk to them about why. In the early days, it's not about changing them. It's about understanding where the team is so that you can build a relationship with them and help them improve. Once we've gone through that observation stage, which is a few weeks, I'm not saying you've got a few months of sitting there, a week, maybe two, of understanding what they do, why they do it. Okay, Now you can start commenting on stuff. You can put suggestions in because the team understand you're not there to fix them. You're there to help them. You've had conversations trying to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. And now you're saying, I get that and I can see a better way. Do you want to come with me over here and try this out? And they may or may not follow you. That will really come down to where you are in your relationship with that team and the value of your ideas. But at least you've got a foundation to propose them. You're not saying they're wrong. You're saying, I get it. I see what you're doing. I can see a better way. Are you interested in coming with me? But I understand if you don't, I've got other ideas. Maybe we try this instead. Maybe we try that. You'll have a sense of what's acceptable and not acceptable to that team. So in those first few days, don't do as much. Don't panic. The value is not in doing. The value is in observing, in listening, okay? in understanding, so that going forwards, you can have much higher quality and more impactful conversations. If you've got to this point in the video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, a like would be appreciated. If you want to hear more from me, more answers to questions that maybe you've got in the Agile world, please subscribe to the channel. And if you've got a question that you really want answered, drop it in the comments. I promise we'll get around to it. Thank you.